I'm going to make some corned beef today. And my recipe for corned beef comes from this book, Charcuterie. Most of the stuff that I do with preserving meats and things comes right out of this book. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is I need six cloves of uh, minced garlic. And I'm going to show you a trick. I didn't invent this, um, and there's a lot of YouTube videos on it, but I'll just show you. So we have our clove of garlic. I'm just going to take the palm of my hand, and I'm going to hit it real good like that. And then I take uh, the cloves that separated, put them in a metal bowl, like so. And the rest of this stuff is all just waste. And I take another metal bowl. This is better if you have two, diff two different sizes so one fits in front of the other. And now I'm just going to shake the heck out of it. And now just pull out your peeled garlic cloves. Uh, it's really that simple. And uh, it used to take me forever to peel garlic. Nowadays, it's so quick. Now, in this stainless steel pot, I've measured out two gallons of water. I have a 13 pound brisket that I'm going to have to trim. I think I'll probably end up with a little bit over 10 pounds, so I need to double the recipe because the recipe in the book is only for about 5 pounds and I need a little bit more brine. So I've got 6 cloves of minced garlic that go in first. Next I need to add about 4 cups of this uh, kosher salt. I'm, I've got 2 boxes here because this one's about half empty. I'm not positive I have enough in here, but we'll see. Next, I need to add a cup of sugar. Now I've got pink salt. This goes under the name, uh, it's sold under the name Instacure One. And I think I bought this from SausageMaker.com. Anyway, I weighed out two ounces of this for my two gallons, and that equates to about 10 teaspoons, according to the book. Next, I've got some pickling spice. This is a homemade one. Uh, I'm going to put a recipe up and you can just pause it. I prefer homemade, but you can certainly buy it in the store. It's basically got cloves, allspice, mustard, bay leaves, and a bunch of other cinnamon, I think. You need four tablespoons of this. But you can buy this um, and it's plenty good, but I prefer the homemade. I use fresher spices and stuff. And that's it for the brine. And basically what I need to do now is bring this to a boil and then let it cool completely before we put our meat in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just to talk a little bit about the meat, I bought um, a brisket at Walmart. Uh, you know, they the price of brisket has just gone through the roof. Um, in fact, all beef has. That's one of the main reasons why I don't buy a whole lot of beef. I uh, shoot deer and I eat that, but corned beef is a weakness. So this one cost me about 35 bucks. Um, don't buy like some fancy cut of corned beef because, or some fancy cut of brisket because it's all the same thing and uh, you're going to be boiling it and, and cooking it anyway. So um, don't spend a, a bunch of money on it. This is about the most expensive piece of brisket I've ever bought and I think it's mainly because the price of beef is so high so um, what I'm going to do to process this is I'm going to go ahead and open this dump the brisket out wash it off real well and then uh, cut it uh, into pieces that will fit into my pot uh, I'm going to trim some of the fat off as much as I can and uh, we'll go from there and uh, just make sure that whenever you are uh, doing this, you start with a sharp knife. Um, it makes the cutting tasks a lot easier.
So now I've got my uh, brisket trimmed up. You know, one end is a lot fattier like this. I could try to trim that out of there, um, but the muscle pieces that are left would be very, very thin. Um, so I'm going to leave that be. This end is pretty lean, um, but this obviously is pretty fatty. And then you've got all this leftover fat, and you can do with that whatever you please. Uh, you can take it and render it into lard if you so chose, um, or you can throw it out, whatever you think you need to do with it. Now what I need to do is take these and put these into our cooled brine, and uh, sink them to the bottom and put a plate on top to weight it down. And they have to sit for five days. And I'll show you the next step once we're done with that. Um, uh, so when you're going to make this, you got to plan ahead uh, quite significantly, um, at least you know five, six days in advance. And uh, one last thing, uh, I like to do this in January because uh, that's a big pot to be having sit in your fridge, and so I like to set it out on the porch and let things cool down out there.